The Sherman and Tingle Show. Mornings on 97.1 FM, The Drive, Chicago's classic rock. Would you have been horrified had your mom uh, given you the talk, Tingle? Yeah. I think I would have. Uh, but you know what? My mom did talk to me a lot about it when I got older. But I mean the first one, the first talk. The first one, I think I would have, yeah, I would have felt a little weird. Did your dad give you the first one, the talk the first time? Yeah, my dad gave it to me pretty much. And then, uh, you know, I was, uh, but I learned the sex ed in seventh grade. That's when we learned it all. Oh, you were late bloomers. We were fifth, fifth grade in our fifth, school. Really? Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah, we're fifth. Seventh. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Riverview. Well, you, Jill brought up the fact that she wants to be a part of that conversation. Your son's in fourth grade, which mm-hmm. is pretty early. Why so early? You want to give the talk. It's not that I want to do it right this second. I just, I want to, I want to talk to him before his friends show him something about sex, before we've talked to him about it. Because I've been reading about it and they say that kids ages 10 to 11 is the first time they're shown something by their friends. And in the day of electronics and devices, I'm well aware that. You know, kids, once they get exposed to something like that, they especially boys, they can't wait to show their friends. So yes. why don't you let Matt talk to him about it? Like, they both kind of have the same anatomy, I would think. Like, if it were me, thank God my parents didn't say anything. They let me go. They're like, ah, he'll figure it out. <laughs> oh, See, no. I my parents didn't say anything either. I think we learned at the Robert Crown Center in fifth grade. But um, it's not that I'm not letting Matt talk to him i haven't even talked to matt about it but i would think if we both talk to him about it at a younger age it might actually go over better than waiting until they're like awkward preteen and they've already seen like porny stuff on their friends phones and you're trying to sort of like undo the weird impression of what they think sex is instead of just kind of explaining it from a a real place i don't know So do you actually are are you envisioning like a a a one-on-one talk with you, or are you guys going to sit him down and both talk about it? I don't know. I'll have to ask Matt what he wants to do, because I haven't actually talked to Matt about it yet, but... See, I don't think you should be a part of it, I, I because I think it's going to weird out your son a little bit. Why? Because your mom. Yeah, imagine a, a, a teenage girl having to talk with her dad. Would you have liked that yeah. as, a, as a girl? Well, yeah. it's not with just me. It's with both the parents. Like, if both the parents are... I mean, well, no, we're, bo- we're both yeah. very close to him, so Just I feel like we can handle it and it won't be weird. My daughters would have went, why is dad here? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You don't want to talk about that. With girls, it's a little different because you're explaining something that's going to happen uh, with their body that the dad the probably thing. doesn't want to be involved with. It's not the same thing. What do you mean it's not the same thing? Boys <laughs> don't get their period. Uh, and that's not that's not how no, they're no, no, allowed to you think guys give don't birth have... and have babies. The girls thing, I think some I think guys are uncomfortable talking about that just in general. Where No, we're talking about like the actual uh, the sex the talk. Act, right. It's your, with your mom, that would be awkward. If I was the son, which I was, that would be awkward talking to my mom. Even to this day, it would be awkward. We with... don't have to go into like great detail necessarily. I just want to Give him the basics so that the first thing he learns about sex comes from his parents and not some friend who is in sixth grade and has something on his phone that he shows him. That's what I'm. That's my intention. I'm. It's not like I'm excluding Matt. It's more like a joint effort. Okay. Has there been anybody that it was explained to by both of their parents and it was not awkward? Or maybe just the your opposite (laughs) sex parent. And how'd that go? It was not awkward. <laughs> I just see this being even more awkward than it would normally be. Well, I don't I don't necessarily agree. I don't think it has to be awkward. It's just not. I mean, it's your kid. It's how they yeah, got here. Not, but it's not reality. Well, listen, you know, the funny thing is, is that if you, like, you know, single parents out there, they might have had to and they had no choice. Right. True. True. It's awkward if you make it awkward. If you're just telling them, you know, the reality of it, it's how they got here. I mean, it's not that weird. I I would much rather have it be my dad, since we kind of have the same anatomy. That's just me, though. Would you be the same way, Tingle, for the most part? Yeah, at the time, if it was like fourth or fifth grade, yeah, I probably would okay. have had my dad. All right, three one two six four two W D R V. Let's see where people are on this. But my no. mom was sick and fun, so it could have been it could have been hilarious. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're right. Your mom, <laughs> she does have a mouth. Three one two six four two W D R V. You know what I meant. Don't take it the wrong way. It's the drive. <laughs> Sherman and Tingle in the morning. So Jill wants to have the talk with her son. Her son is in fourth grade, and we were talking about it. And uh, she wants to be in the room with uh, you and Matt t- together. 
assuming Matt is down for that, yeah. Just trying to figure out how to do it, how to go about it. I want to make sure we talk to him before he gets uh, information from his older friends. He has a couple of buddies that are like fifth and sixth grade. You're afraid of these buddies, aren't you? Do they have phones, the buddies? uh, One of them does. It's more like I just, I read a lot about stuff like this, and they say that most kids are exposed to... um, Something before 10 or 11 is the first time they see something, which is like sex related. Just to let you know that it's a, like a, a part of growing up, boys, it's, it's kind of normal. So, I mean, don't look at it as, oh my God, he's going to turn into some deviant. No, no, no. I just mean, I would hate for the first time he sees anything that relates to sex for him to, for it to be before we ever talk to him about it. You know what, what I mean? We were saying, okay. we were saying, yeah, we would be horrified if, uh, if both of our parents were a part of it. Like, it would be better if it was... Like, if you're a boy, it's it's probably easier coming from your dad. If you're a girl, easier from your mom. Well, because it's 1950, of course. My daughters would never want to hear it from me. Liz, chill. It's got nothing to do with 1950. This is not a chauvinistic thing. Do you and Katie sleep in twin beds, too, with, like, a nightstand in the middle? Chill. It doesn't stop the fact that... You- <laughs> You, you're, you're, I'm telling it's you, funny. it's awkward. It's it would be awkward. That's I'm, pretty funny. I'm, what, what, that's pretty funny. What are you laughing visual, at? That's a pretty funny visual. You gotta admit. What would that? We're sleeping in separate beds. We're, we're, yeah. Hey, Shay. We oh, do not coffee, talk. Shay. We do not talk to the women no, about talk their about bodies. Like that. It's yeah, unheard of. That I never. When did I ever say that, Jill? <laughs> I never said that. <laughs> I was saying funny. it's awkward. I think it's a little old-fashioned. That's I, what I'm saying. Okay, hold on. Like, well, Natalie's with you. Natalie and Bolingbroke. Go ahead. Natalie. Hi. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I had the talk with my son, mm-hmm. um, and he was he was very young, just like you guys are talking about. I think that made it a lot easier because he didn't have an, an interest in anything sexual yet, so that took some of the awkwardness away. The other thing I did was I took him out for ice cream, and we sat in the car, so he didn't have to look at me. Oh. And yeah. I think that helped, too. That would have ripped um, the ice cream shop forever and, and, for me. <laughs> like, I'm never going to Baskin well, and Robbins again. This no, is all I'm going to think no, about. No, no, no. But here's but here's the thing. My int- I didn't start with the intention to have the sex talk. Yeah. I actually started with the intention of having the puberty talk. My son has medical stuff, and he was starting hormone therapy, and I didn't know how fast anything would happen. Right. And I was kind of freaked out by that part. But I was like, I don't want something to happen and have him not understand why. Yeah. All right. So and she wanted so to get ahead of even it. Even though he was even though he was young, I wanted to have the puberty talk with him. All right. But he kept asking questions, and my my then- theory has always been. Answer questions honestly. When they stop asking questions, stop giving information. Yeah, uh, that's, all right. well, now, that's exactly my my method of thinking. Is I want to do it when he's young, so that it's less awkward because he's not like preteen or like oh my god, mom, shut up yet. Listen, not not all the women are on your side though, Jill. Becky and Orland Park, you're against it. You say no. Why? My son would have been mortified <laughs> had I had a talk with him like that. I'm with the guys on this, Jill. Sorry. But how old is your no was your son when your husband talked to him? Uh, my husband didn't. I was a single mom. My brother talked to him. Like when he was older? And he was probably, no, he was probably around 10 or 11 when he talked to him, but absolutely not. Mm-mm. That'd be he awesome. was embarrassed even talking to another guy about stuff like that. Okay. All right. Yeah, I so, guess my no. son's not super <laughs> embarrassed, about, so maybe that's why my my mind's going to that. Is I can't see him being super embarrassed because of his age now. Maybe in a year or two. Well, I don't the, know. Let's just ask him right now. Luke, Luke, are you on the line? Hello. Hi, Luke. Hi. Now, now, would this embarrass you, Luke? What What, what does mommy want to say to me? Well, I don't. Know. Jill, maybe we should just do the mom. Talk. Maybe we should just do the talk right mm, now. Okay. Yeah. What? Your your mom wants to tell you something. It won't be awkward. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to my husband before I talk to my son. So. Mom. Yeah. What? Nothing. Have a great day at school. Is there anything you want to ask your mom? No, Billy. Billy, I just yeah, I was at the park and Billy showed me something on his phone. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta hold it together, man. I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know what it was. Well, it was worth the try. It was worth See, the, I'm already it too was late. worth a try. See, I already missed it. It's a perfect I'll explain song. Explain it later, Luke. All right, it's a perfect song for you next, Luke. Love and touch and squeeze. Oh, God. <laughs> Off the phone on the drive. <laughs> 
The Sherman and Tingle Show. Mornings on 97.1 FM, The Drive, Chicago's classic rock.